Welcome back to the stream. We're going to continue working on the game and we're going to start by doing some bug fixes and then uh, we're going to do some, some, some polish to some something that we have uh, in the game. And lastly, if we have enough time, uh, we will work on, uh, on a new weapon, which is Somewhat similar to the projectile weapon, but uh, it has a special ability. I've uh, I've talked about it in in previous streams. Is the is the spear weapon? But first, uh, let's do a recap of what we've done last stream. Um, yeah. Yeah. So in the previous stream, uh, we have worked on. On the on the on the ability to to upgrade your weapons. So when you play the game, let's wait for this to load. Okay, so I'm playing the game right now. Let me put a weapon somewhere. Just let's just put it here. So so now I have a weapon, and what I can do now is click on the weapon, and on the left hand side, actually let's maximize this so we can see better. On the left hand side, uh, we now see the details about the weapon. Uh, its name, the level, and the, uh, the the stats that it has, the the current stats and the or yeah the the, the, the multipliers for the stats and and the the stats that we will gain by by leveling it up. So yeah, and uh, what we've done last time is uh, made the ability for the for the player to to level the 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 weapon. So. Yeah, basically by by clicking this button, you're able to to level up the, the, the level up the the weapon and get uh, get bonuses. And the other the other thing that we've worked on is something that it's not easily shown, and that's what we're gonna work on today. Uh, but that is the the ability to yeah, actually it's not easy to visualize let's see um yeah you you can right click on enemies and you'll be able to to basically kill them slowly <laughs> that's the the the, the, easy, the easiest way to put it uh we can inspect this however but uh, we have to look in the in the inspector for a bit so so here is the component um Actually, uh, let's check that this enemy can receive damage from the... Wait. Wait, where is that? Am I not allowed to see that? Oh yeah, apparently I have hide in play mode, which is not actually correct. Should be able to see this. Yeah, anyway, so... Um, yeah, let's actually just try it. Yeah, apparently for the big enemy, I don't, that is not allowed. Uh, maybe we, we can see it in the bug mode. Ah, yes, we do. Okay, let's add this, this new zap power damage type. So now what that means, we should be able to... So, so looking at the uh, the health, yeah. So right now we are able to right click on the enemy and we are re we are uh, doing damage. And now if I right click once more, the enemy is gonna die. There we go. Yeah. So, 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 so we've added the the, the ability f f for the player to 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 damage. Um, to damage the enemies at will so so you you can you, this is one of the powers that the, that the user will have so you by, by pressing right click you'll have 
uh, the ability to either damage an enemy or, or directly damage a specific enemy, uh, do damage over an area, or slow down the enemies in a in a specific radius. Uh, currently, we only have the the the, the instant damage one, but that's uh, that's the idea. That's the idea of it. Um, yeah, this is kind of this is kind of it uh, for for the recap. Um, yeah, let's look a bit uh, a bit in more detail uh, to, to at what we we are going to do today. Uh, there are two bugs that we have to to look at um, at the for the healer. There is one for the for the for the zap the the, the power that we've just saw. And then what else? Yeah, th there is a there is a thing that we have to do for the healer where after he attaches himself to the tower, he shouldn't be counted as an active enemy. So so the the wave should continue uh, even if the even if a healer is still attached to the tower. Okay, we are going to add a placeholder crystal at the top of the tower, which will react to the tower's health. This is just a, a visual thing. It's not, yeah, it doesn't have any impact on the on the gameplay. We are going to add a laser beam to the to the laser weapon because currently you can't see it in action. Um, the, the 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 enemies enter the the range of the of the laser weapon, but uh, you can't see. Yeah, you can see it actually shooting the enemies. And uh, as I said, if we have time, we will um, try to make the, the spear weapon. Cool. So yeah, we're gonna start with the with the first uh, with the first bug. Uh, yeah. So 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 the the first problem that we have is uh, with the healer is because of a thing that we've done uh, either last stream or two streams ago. I think this two streams ago is more more correct. Um, if we look. At let's choose uh, let's look at the projectile weapon for example. If we look at the projectile weapon, we uh, we basically have uh, two um, two colliders for it. So there's one collider which comes from the enemy detector. So uh, this uh, actually yeah. So the, the, this uh, big sphere collider that I can see is. Uh, can I? No, this is not. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, so this uh, this big collider, um, this big sphere collider, is uh, responsible for detecting enemies whenever they are in range of the uh, in range of the uh, of the weapon. And there is a second um, there is a second collider that we've added, which is this small one. And this one is used for uh, detecting the click on the weapon. And uh, because of a thing, uh, because we've actually uh, put both this collider and the the enemy de uh, detector collider uh, on uh, um, on the same layer, uh, the the healer enemy. Uh, takes them both into consideration when uh, attempting to, to to attach himself to the tower. So uh, a bit about uh, a bit about how the healer enemy works. So he 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 detects when he's um, inside of a weapon's range, and he keeps track. Uh, he keeps track of, uh, of it, and imme immediately after. He gets out of the range. He tries to attach himself to the tower, but because of this uh, this new collider, this small one, the 
the the, the healer kind of um yeah i gets confused because he thinks okay he 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 enters this this area and then he, when he exits he thinks he's outside of the the area of uh, of attack of the weapon but, but that's not correct so um what i think i'm going to do or no what what i know i sh i should do is uh, make another layer um and i think for um yeah, we, we, we basically we need to make another layer and separate those two colliders into yeah, and put them in uh, in uh, separate layers. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which one I should change, either the one for the enemy detector or the the collider for the weapon. Um, let's see. Actually, no, uh, I know what I'm going to do. Uh, we are going to rename actually this one. So this is called weapon. I'm going to rename it into weapon range. And we are going to do another one and we're going to call it just weapon. So yeah, both of those are going to have weapon range here but we are actually gonna uh, change the collider for for the model and actually set it to to weapon so let's save this uh let's go to this weapon as well the dummy laser weapon and change it here as well let's check that the enemy detector yeah still has weapon range here that's correct and here we're going to change it to weapon so we have this saved and now we should be able to try it and see this work correctly. So let's go fast and put a weapon here. So uh, we have a weapon. Yep. So previously what, what, uh, what was happening is after the, the healer enemy got past the weapon, he would attach himself to the tower right in here in this spot. But now, because this is on a different layer, he he goes, uh, he continues, and then attaches himself when he gets out of that uh, that area. Okay, so that is that is indeed correct. So actually, this bug is fixed. So let's. Um, oh, I forgot to start a timer for this, but I think it might have been something like like five minutes, right? Um, I don't know, doesn't really matter that much, it was a short uh, time uh, anyway. Okay. Oh no, this is a fix because this was a bug. Lish. Um, cool. Uh, unfortunately, I have to take a, a really quick break. Um, yeah, uh, sorry for that. Um, I'm gonna be back in uh, in a couple of minutes. Okay, I'm back. Sorry for this uh, for this pause right uh, right at the start of the stream. But let's continue. Yeah, so so we're gonna continue with another uh, with another bug fix for the healer. Um, yeah, the, the 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 problem is that, and I I don't have all the all the info about this. It's just something that I've noticed. I think when we we reuse a, a healer from the object pool, uh, the enemy attaches himself to the to the tower immediately instead of. Um, instead of uh, you know working as expected, so we have to to do a bit of uh, debugging for this, and then uh, yeah we'll see how we can fix it and what's actually the problem. Okay, so let's see if we can. Um, Let's see if we can uh, 
spot this issue. Um, let's do another level. Killer debug. Okay. Uh, um, whatever one. Let's give it a currency. Let's put it at the top of the list. And let's go inside. So let's create a wave. It's wave one. We're only gonna have a healer. Count one spawn one, that's that's perfect. And now we're gonna have wave two. Which is gonna be the exact same thing. The idea being that after we finish wave one we should uh, for, for the wave two we should reuse the same heal a healer so if my assumption is right uh, we should see the problem right away so let's save this uh actually i did put that level uh, uh, to be the first right uh, yeah healer healer debug is the first one cool so now let's play and we have to put a weapon immediate immediately down so the the healer attaches himself to the tower so actually let's put it here there we go, we have a healer. Now we can right click him a couple of times and now he's dead. Actually, this is not a good test. Uh... Oh, he started immediately. Mm. Yeah, actually I don't like this test. I, I think I want the, the weapon to be a little bit uh, a little bit up and not be immediately available from the from the start of the tower. Like, let's put it somewhere here. Let's speed this up. Okay. Let's kill this one. And now let's wait for the other one to come. That did not work as I as I expected. Hmm. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to to remove this actually. This should be disabled in play mode. Uh, this sh shouldn't be anything. Actually, no. Let's just not not disable it. Let's just have it there. Okay. Anyway, that was that's not the problem. That's not what we need to look at. So we want to look at the healer. Actually, no. Let's look at the yeah. Let's look a bit at the uh, the object pool and see. Oh, this is the one that is used. Oh, there we go. Here you can see it. So this one is, let's look for this is active. Cause I, I really think that's, uh, that, that value is not reset. So not this. Yeah, so we're not doing update. Okay. I think I should uh, add those. Actually, where am I? Oh, I'm adding them to to the load phase. Okay.
Um, I think I need to implement this. The user data, I guess. So on reset, we are going to do first of all uh, is active should be set to false. When is this called actually? Let's see this. Okay, on, on release. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, when is this call then? Okay, when it's spawned, the, everything is reset. Okay. Yeah, okay. So where was I? So on the healer data, yeah, we have to reset that. And I think we need to do a, a, a bit more uh, resets actually. So on the on the detectors, I think I, I think we need to do some some resets. So uh object detector data um yeah i have to reset objects in range oh actually yeah no that's what i So here we have to say objects in range dot clear. Let's make this virtual in case we need to do something else in okay. Yeah, so let's look at the so don't we have an enemy detector here as well? Oh, I haven't got around to move it. Oh, I should do that. But I'm not gonna do it right now, I think. Never mind. Um, this is what I want. We're gonna call base reset and we're gonna say closest enemy is null. And I think we're gonna need something similar for the weapon detector actually. Oh, never mind, apparently not. Cool. And actually the last thing that we need to do, we have to go into the object detector and on trigger exit, we have to do another check. If it doesn't pass the filters or 
if it doesn't contain the object. Just in case the trigger or, the, or this method is triggered randomly after the enemy dies or something, we have to make sure that the, that, that, that that thing is not triggered. Just uh, just an extra check. Won't be that uh, that problematic because it's it's not a big list. Okay. Cool. Uh, one other thing, I think I think we need to go through. Uh, yeah, we need to go through through the other um, components that we have for the for the enemies and see if there's anything that we need to to reset that uh, you know. I'm looking at this for example is stopped maybe maybe needs to be reset so let's look at that for example so we are, what is this this is the enemy movement so here enemy movement data oh we already do uh are we resetting the distance we're not resetting this though so is stopped is false okay that's nice what else do we have here? This can update. What is this? I think this is not. What is this? Where does this come from? I actually need this. I don't think we need this. To be honest. Because I think I can do D dot I can do this. I can just check the, the, the if this if the state is playing. Now there's no need for this can update. Yeah, let's get rid of it. Cool. Another one down. What else do we have here? Uh, we, we saw the health. The health is okay. Yeah, I think that's it. Because uh, the others are, are shared between the, this one and the... Cool. I do see, however, that there are some... Okay, this is not from me. I'm pretty sure this is not from me. Um, Unity is being crazy with those allocations. That's not an issue from the code, it's, for, it's an issue from Unity. can see I just move my mouse and then it goes mad with with allocations okay so it's not from that. Okay, anyway, um, let's try to test this some more, um, even though I don't think we, we will be able to see the, the, the error anymore. Actually, let's look a bit at the, so, yeah, no, let's look back uh, at the, 
uh, the healer component. Yeah, so I think the fix that we did for the for the weapon detector is gonna help us with this, because um, yeah, this this is the problem that we had. Uh, so basically, this this method was being called. That was the problem that we had. So for this method to be called, this needs to happen. We need to get out of a weapons uh you know to get out of the weapon detector or the weapon has to get out of the of our weapon detector yeah, and i think just uh just by by clearing everything that we know about weapons in that in the you know during the reset i think that was the the thing that we needed to do okay yeah, uh, let's just play the game. Let's see if it if everything still works. But I'm pretty sure that uh, that this issue is solved. Okay, he got attached. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we have to kill him for the wave to continue. Let's get rid of those allocations messages. Now it's attached, we're all good. Let's expand, let's go up. And I'm not exactly sure where the game starts. Oh, there. Hey, this is, a, this is, this is bad. Okay, so we, we have fixed the issue or we have fixed part of the issue. Uh, this having its ring still active, yeah, that is not good. So, I'm going to do an enemy reset here as well. And what we are going to do is set this on false. And is there anything else we need to do? Um, is the root transform? So it doesn't matter. It was that stop which we, we are taking care of in the in the enemy movement. Yeah, that should do it. Yeah, let's try this again. Because now we need, we, I mean, I hope we, we know what we'll look for. Actually, I know how to test this. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the, to the healer's object pool. So this. And let's say that the chunk size is, is one. So so now when we play, we, we are only going to have one um, one healer in the object pool. Let's put the weapon there. So if we look here, yeah, we only have one healer. Let's speed this up. That's good. Let's kill him. Let's keep the cooldown. And now uh, this still doesn't work. What? Why? Oh, and that skip the weapon altogether. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. That is something else. What is going on here? Why is he not detecting the weapons? Huh. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know why he's not detecting the weapons. So let's put, I guess, another weapon. 
open get at the top and let's just watch this it does have something in the range huh So I know why that ring did not disappear, but I don't know why this is not working. Oh, interesting. So let's put a breakpoint here. Oh, we are stopping. Oh, we are actually stopping the detection here. Okay. That is something I guess that we have to do back here again. Okay. Actually, should we even stop listening for, for the weapons? No. Actually, no because what we can do is actually use our own flag and see if it's, if it's active or whatever, just return. Okay, now getting back to the to, to the other issue, even though I, I, I don't think this is fixed. Uh, oh no, yeah, no, this is this is fixed. Uh, this will be fixed. Uh, the other issue is this. I think the reason why this doesn't work is because... Oh, let's get rid of this too. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we're only looking at the... We're only looking at the root. And we're getting the components uh, on the game objects. But I, I actually need to get the components in children. So it's gonna look at at, at, uh, at both the the root game object and its children. Okay, so let's try it now. I think I think now it's gonna work uh, the way it's supposed to. Okay, so we have one. Let's put a weapon. It goes, it goes, it goes, it goes, and should attach itself to the tower. Now let's kill it. Let's keep the cooldown, and we have another one. And this one should do the exact same thing. There we go. Cool. Cool. It works. Another bug fixed. Uh, let's reset the healer enemy object pool. Let's put it back to chunk size 10. And let's do some... Okay, that let, let, yeah. Let's look at the at the code. Let's do some uh, review of the code. Yeah, we've added this. This clear here. That's correct. Let's go to the healer. What have we changed in the healer? Because we added the reset. Oh yeah. By the way, apparently this, or the fact that I don't have to specify this, uh, it's something from a um, from a new version of C sharp. We we have uh, I have updated the project uh, yesterday to to 2021.2. Uh, we were previously on 2020.3.6, I think. So we have made the jump to 2021. And uh, yeah, there are some um, some new stuff in the in the editor. Um, Maybe the most uh, 
the most e easy to spot thing is the fact that the the, the bar at the top and the the tools in the in the scene have changed. But actually, previously the, the those tools were in the top bar. Now they are uh, uh, they are stuck to the to the scene itself. And yeah, you can test some pretty interesting stuff. You can do you can dock things you can place them in different positions you can even enable and disable stuff if you don't want them so yeah it's uh, it's quite interesting anyway where were we healer data we have another reset in here yeah um There are only two more songs. Enemy health data, what's this? Oh yeah, we've got rid of those two. That is correct. Enemy movement, it's another reset, I think. Oh no, this is the component itself, yeah. So we've got rid of this and we're using directly this, uh, this check. And in the data, we've put a reset. Or we've uh, added something to the reset method method that's right enemy entity what have we done here yeah we, we are looking in, in children as well enemy detector data it's a reset yeah okay game settings game settings oh yeah because i've changed the i've changed the the level is that we're playing and this is because we've added that new wave cool okay so let's uh, let's commit this i oh, know this is a fix Publish. Cool. Another bug fixed. Uh, the third one is an error that I've just saw today. Apparently, there's there's some error when when we enter play mode that comes from the from the Zep Power service. I don't know why it's happening. We have to do some debugging. But yeah, I I, I don't know more than this. So let's let's look at it. Uh, let's clear the console. Let's make the console a little bit bigger and let's play. And we should be able to see the the, the errors uh, at the top. There we go. Those two. So we have to see why those two are are happening. Probably because the the, the lifecycle service is um, is null. But I don't know why why it would be null. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna put a breakpoint there. Let's exit. Let's play again. Yeah, we should get a. Oh yeah, we should also attach the debugger, otherwise it would not work. Play. There we go. Oh, this is not null. This is null. Wait, what? Why is the lifecycle state null? Why would it be null? Uh, wait, actually, ooh, where am I coming to this from? Where, where is it? On scene unloaded. What scene are we talking about? I mean, okay, the playground. Also, the problem is when we exit i see okay so the problem is that when we exit uh it's not when you enter play mode but more like when you exit edit mode okay uh let's look a bit at the lifecycle service no i want to look at the code actually do we also we're also doing stuff on scene loaded 
what do we do once in loaded? I mean, we're, we're doing, we're calling the reset, but uh, what's the reset doing? Lifecycle state sets it to a new state machine. Ah, uh, this is happening because, okay, this is happening because of the, the domain reload, I think. Because this, we, we, we never make this null, as far as I can remember. We're only resetting it, set, resetting it at, at, uh, on, on scene load. Okay, yeah. So this cleanup does make sense. Um, yeah, does make sense when when you when you're in the game, but not when you are exiting or entering play mode, because those hooks are also triggered when you are in the editor and you trigger play mode. So yeah, just by 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 checking this if it's null or not, uh, that should fix the the issue. It is interesting though that we have two errors. I assume there there would be only one, but I don't know why there are two. But either way, this should fix it. Or or not. Oh no, this is another issue. This is another issue. The controls manager. Who's calling the powers manager detach? Oh, this is a struct. Wait. Then what the hell are you telling me? Uh, yeah. Let's put a, a breakpoint here. Oh, this is still going. Okay. Okay, so we're here. Okay, so camera action is, is null. Uh, let's go inside uh, this, I guess. Controls is null. Also, this crashes because this is null. So why would this be null? Because of the domain reload. Okay. Uh, yeah, for this I don't really have a... Huh. The only thing I can think of is, but no, this won't work either. This won't work either. 
but I should do that as well. Anyway. Huh. Hmm. I don't know how we should fix this. I mean, we wouldn't have this problem if uh, we would get rid of uh, of the domain reload, I think. Or, or maybe at the first play, we will have this problem. And then at the second play, we wouldn't have it. Maybe. Um, now, one thing that I can do is instead of having those shortcuts, um, Yeah, instead of having those shortcuts, those two shortcuts, just I should be able to just expose the the game controls here, and I can just get my 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 controls direct from this. That would be the the easy solution. And I think that's what I'm gonna do actually. Otherwise, this actually. Hmm, can I do this? I think I can actually. Let's no. Let's do this. And it won't like this. Yeah, that's correct. Ah, come on. Okay, I don't like this. I don't want to cast it here. Actually, but even if I if even if I expose the the game controls directly, I still have to do this. I wouldn't have to cast it though.
Okay, let's try this now. Okay, and now we have a lot of issues because now we have to always check if that is null or not. Yeah, okay, I don't like that. I don't like that. Nope. I'm gonna keep this like 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 this. I'm gonna fix it for for that specific case, for the zap uh, zap power. No here. Uh, what was that? Yeah, I'm gonna fix it for for this case specifically. So let's undo this. Okay. So I, I am going to check. Um, so public bool. Actually, let's, yeah, let's reverse it. There you go, no more errors. Yeah, so so I think this this uh, this way of dealing with it is better because the way the way those services are set up, um, we should always or or when we want to get data from them, we should always have the data available or in this case the a reference to the controls um but this is like the, like the, the 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 reason why the error was happening right right here uh was because it was a yeah, it was a very, it was an edge case basically it was executing the code for uh when the scene when the scene was unloaded but at the same time, there was a the main reload there, so something w the, the the controls were null, and yeah. Hello, hello. I'm great. You? I am just uh, finishing up uh, fixing another bug for the game. How are you? Yeah, so I think we're going to keep it like this. Let's uh, wrap this up. Let's commit those changes and let's get to the next task. That Actually, uh, what have we done in the zap power? 
Oh yeah, that question mark, correct. So this is a fix. Publish. Oh nice, me too. Nice to see. Are you, are you, are you also a game dev? I mean, you're doing uh, game development? Or are you just a, just a gamer? Okay, so the next task that we're gonna work on is this one. So uh, this is a change that we that we need to make to the healer. Um, yeah, we don't want to make him. Uh, so after he attaches himself to the tower, we don't want to count him anymore uh, towards the um, the you know the, the the list of the enemies that the player has to kill to to go to the next wave. Uh, you want to just yeah, you, you can go to the next wave even if you have healers attached to the tower it's your it's your job as the player to to make sure you clear up your uh, your tower so yeah that's what what we're gonna do oh nice um i haven't actually used rpg game maker uh but i've uh, but i've heard about it and i've saw videos about it So how, how did it work out? As you said, you tried, so I, I'm, I'm assuming you haven't finished uh, making the game or... Why did you stop? Okay, so let's go to the healer. And actually, I think we need to go to the enemy health. Oh, I think I know how this is made. I think. Yeah, we are using this. Oh, so you're, you were just testing the, you're just testing the project. So I try, so, so are you trying to make another game with another engine or you just stopped? Um, hmm. Yeah, so the way this is working, we, we have a, so, so, so we are using a, a, a component or, or, or yeah, a scriptable object that I made for the, or which is part of the ES framework, which is called the transform runtime set, which basically what it does is just, uh, it's simply a list in a scriptable object, which holds whatever whatever values you want to, to, to save in the list. And we're using this to, to know uh, 
what enemies are still uh, alive in, in the game. And we have a helper function also from Yes Framework, which uh, basically adds a transform, which is the transform of the of the healer enemy. It adds the the transform to the list when the when the when the game object is enabled, and it removes it uh, when it's disabled. And yeah, this worked perfectly until now because right now I want to also remove it from the list even though um, the enemy is not yet dead so yeah I think we're gonna add yeah let's go to the actually have we added no we haven't added that to the, to the... Let me do, um, I'm going to make a new task here because there's something that I, that I would like to have. Uh, let's make a task. Let's put in the backlog actually. History logs to the sets yeah there's there's one thing that i like about uh oh is the is the timer still running oh yes yeah, it still is um there's one thing that i've done for yeah for example object pools uh th there is a way of seeing what happened with this object so for example uh i can see that at five after five seconds uh, uh yeah after five seconds uh, after the, the game started i've queued up two new instances to spawn so so basically i can debug i know exactly when the when those instances were, were spawned or where when they were uh when, when the object pool was notified that okay i have to spawn two, two new instances and also I have a stack trace for this, so I know exactly from where in the code this came from. So yeah, I'd like I'd like to have this to in the in the set as well. So you can see exactly which item was added, which was removed, and by whom and at what time. Because because right now it's easier to track if we only use this at transform. Um or add to set script, but right now I'm gonna add it from the from the code as well, so that that's gonna make it a little bit harder to to, to track. So public transform transform runtime set. I create this play, but it's difficult to change it and make it. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know how how RPG Maker works, but um, yeah, you should try. You should try something else, I guess. Maybe if you want to. Um, my 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 recommendation <laughs> is to try to use Unity because I think it's very easy for beginners. It's very beginner friendly. Uh, there are a ton of uh, community tutorials available um, on, on YouTube and other platforms, so it would be easy to, to just start uh, uh, learn uh, how to use Unity. Um, not really. So I started streaming, you know, consistently since... Um, I, I think it's it has been already half a year, um, but I'm not I'm not actually streaming just so I can stream. I'm actually what I'm doing with the streams is something that it it's helping me. Um, I am basically 
uh, time boxing my, my, my time, I, my, the time that I spent on the game. Because on the previous, uh, on the previous game that I've made, at least for, for the, for the last couple of months, uh, before the, before the release, um, yeah, I, uh, I overworked myself a bit and I don't want to end up there again. So basically right now I'm, I said that, okay, I'm going to work on this game in my free time. But I'm only gonna do it while I'm streaming, so that I, so that I don't have like you know a, a whole day of working and not going up from my from my desk and something like that. Because that was uh, yeah, that was not uh, a great experience. I had like two months of constant work, and that was uh, yeah really really taxing on my body. Because I, because I also have a, I have another job. Uh, on top of uh, doing game dev. So yeah, basically, I'm doing streaming just so I can uh, restrict the time that I that I allocate towards the game, or actually writing code for the game, so I don't go. Uh, I don't go crazy with it and just spend hours and hours on, on it in a single day. Um, I think that should do it. Oh, cool. I'm... Uh... <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm also doing uh, web development uh, in on my day job. So I'm I I'm doing web development at my day job and I'm doing game dev in my spare time. Are you are you working with uh, with any? Frameworks in you know. Uh... Oh nice. Okay, okay. I, I I've also worked with uh, PHP a couple of no. I've worked with P PHP for a long time, a couple of years, but I haven't really touched it uh, in a in a in a in a while. <laughs> I, I mean, I know I've done some, some things with, with PHP, but not nothing really major. Okay, let's try this. So now what I'm expecting to see is I'm going to attach a, wep a weapon and put it here. And after the after the healer attaches himself to the tower right here, I'm expecting to see this uh, this countdown starting to work. Basically meaning that yep, a new a new wave is incoming in a couple of seconds. Let's put another weapon in case the the new enemy comes. Yep, the the new enemy comes. Uh, in this direction. Okay, he's gonna attach himself there, and yep. Now we. Cool. Okay, so we have that this also. So now, so now the 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 power that we added in the last stream now it does make sense, because now I have to actually, even though even though you can't see it, but I have to actually right click on enemies to kill them or or on healers I should specify. So you as the player you have to to kill the healers uh, by yourself using the using the powers that you have. Okay. So, yep, another task done.
Let's commit those changes. Wait, 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 what's happening here? Wait, haven't I? Wait, what? Haven't I committed those changes? Apparently I did not. Um, or, or it didn't work. Okay, uh, one second, we have to commit this. Those powers, yeah. So those three. And then we need to commit those three. So picture. This. Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you right away. Give me one second. Let me let me change the music. Should we choose? Let's do disturbed, maybe. Yeah, sure. Let's do disturbed. Okay. So, yeah. So, so, so this game, this game is a tower defense, uh, with you know, classic elements of a of a tower defense. Uh, but it has a twist, and that twist is the fact that instead of playing on a on a on a you know on flat terrain. Uh, you're actually playing on a, on an actual tower. Uh, let me change the the levels a bit so I can show you better the experience. Okay, so let's save that. Yeah. Okay, so as I said, you're you're playing on an actual tower, so. You, this is, this is the, this is the tower, and uh, the, the, the green lines are the paths that the, that the enemies take. Oh my God, this, okay, this is not fixed. Uh, this is the, the, the bug that I, that I was tracking previously. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So, so you are, um, yeah, you, you basically you have to, to defend the tower uh, by placing weapons. Uh, let's put a, a laser there so so it kills everything. So yeah, basically it's it's basically a a, a, a standard tower a tower defense game in which you, you place weapons. There there are waves of enemies that come and you you have to kill them by uh, by placing weapons. You also have the ability to kill them by by using powers, which uh, which we have one right now, which is called the zap. Uh, it does work, but in in the game it's not showcased. There's no visual feedback for it. So, but I think you saw it previously. Uh, if I right click uh, an enemy a couple of times, um, so, or each time I right click an enemy, he takes damage, and eventually he's gonna die. And I think he's gonna die now. Nope. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, I don't know why that doesn't work weird yeah so so you have you have you also have powers as in, uh, as with other um, tower defense games you you right click enemies to to kill them or slow them down uh, you have the ability to to upgrade your weapons wait a second Okay, we have some errors. Uh, let's restart this. Okay, so yeah, you, you have the ability to Oh, this still doesn't work. Wait, what? Okay, I think I broke something. I can no longer click on weapons. 
What the hell is going on? Okay, something is definitely wrong. I can no longer click on stuff. And he's going crazy with allocation. Okay, uh, let's restart the Unity because Unity is going nuts. Yeah, sorry for this. Um. Yeah, so basically, right now you have the ability to to upgrade your weapons. You can increase the stats. Uh, yeah, you can increase the stats uh, by by purchasing uh, upgrades uh, using your coins. And the the difference between um, this game and other tower defense games is that um, in in a standard tower defense, you you will have multiple um, multiple maps to play on. Which might be totally different, uh, but in our game you actually you, you technically play on the same tower, except that whenever you you go from one level to the other, the tower expands in in height. So you see, so yeah, basically you get new you you basically get a new part of the tower to play on on each level. And I hope I can show you that now. Let's see if. Uh, if I can click on stuff now, you don't have a lot of allocation issues now. I still can't click on. I still can click on on things. I can place weapons, but I can click to do other stuff. Okay. Uh, something's really weird here. Really, really, really weird. Let's speed this up. The laser is gonna take care of our enemies. Right now, the the, the laser is very buffed. Uh, it, it instantly kills uh, every enemy. Okay, so this. Oh, I know why it's broken. Yep, I totally know why it's broken. Let's move past this as well. Okay. Oh yeah, we've just introduced this bug. Yeah, it does make sense. Huh. Okay. We apparently have introduced some bugs. Uh, let's pause the game. Okay, so so yeah, uh, after you you finish all the waves, you have this nifty little button here, which which appears, which is called expand tower. So now let let's just look from the editor because it's easier to to see right now because we haven't implemented some stuff that we need. So this is the tower that you play on. And now, if I if I click on the expand tower button, as you can see, the the tower just grew grew in height. And now, basically, what happens is you have this new um, this new part of the tower to, to to play on. So so the new enemies that are gonna spawn are gonna start spawning from the new or on the new part of the tower that you've just unlocked. And yeah, with, with each level, uh, the, the game is gonna become much more, uh, much more difficult. Indeed. Okay. Um, let's fix those issues that 
if introduced uh, previously. Okay, so first, um, let's look at the weapons for controls click manager. Weapon slot, weapon range tower, and also weapon. Actually, no, not weapon range, but weapon. Let's try it now. So now, when we create a weapon, okay, now we're able to click on it. Okay, so that's that was easy to fix. Yeah, so so when you when you have a weapon, you have the ability to. To click on the weapon and th this panel shows up. Also, by the way, the 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 the, the interface for 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 everything that you see on the screen is um, is not final. It's just made to to look a little bit pretty. But uh, yeah, we're gonna change it. And yeah, you can uh, upgrade the tower. It's gonna become more powerful. So so the uh, so its stats are are increasing. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. And yeah, uh, we have to look at this issue. Uh, let's speed this up. We're gonna take some damage. Yeah, whatever. Uh, currently, you don't die. Uh, <laughs> you don't die uh, when you reach zero health. Is that's not implemented yet? Wait, am I still not? Whoa! Oh, never mind. This uh, the the weapon is killing the enemies. I was I was wondering why they are disappearing so fast, but I've up upgraded the weapon, so so now it's much more powerful. It has like, yeah, plus one thousand percent damage. Also, the game is not balanced at all. Those those values are totally random and are put by me, not the 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 guy who does balancing a level design. Can it be multiplayer? Maybe. Will it be multiplayer? Uh, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, multiplayer games are way more harder to do than, than single player ones. And yeah, we don't have that much. So, so, so first of all is the, it, it, they're, they're much more harder to, to make, to, to, to develop. And also you need a lot more time and people to, to actually test the game if it's a multiplayer one. So, yeah, we don't have that kind of resources. Okay. Um... Oh, yep, yep, this is the error. Okay, okay, does make sense. Okay, I know what I have to fix. So, the problem is the following. Um, we have a way in, in the in the waves definitions to, to specify, let's look at one level. Let's look at this first level, for example. We have a way of specifying multipliers. So, so you, you here you specify what enemies should uh, should be spawned, and you have uh, you have the ability to to specify multipliers for their stats, and that works. That's okay. The problem is that we have enemies that are spawned in one wave, which are still present 
in the game when we are actually playing another wave because the healers uh, as uh, because we've done the, the, the feature right now the the healers uh after they attach themselves to the tower they are no longer count uh, are counted towards the enemies that you have to kill to go to the next wave so the problem is that this method so so when when we when we try to kill the the the, the healer when he reaches zero health we we want to give the player its reward for killing that enemy but the problem is that we are trying to get the multiplier for its stat in case there are multipliers for for the for the stat for the for the reward that, that the player should get we we try to get that reward from the wave manager but because we're currently on another wave which might be doesn't have healers uh, this um, this call no longer works because yeah the, 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 the game the game basically says okay I'm looking at this wave I'm trying to get the the multiplier for the for the enemy that you that you're trying to or, or that you're telling me about but I don't have that that enemy on this uh, specific wave so what we actually have to do we have to get this multiplier beforehand not when the yeah not when the Uh, when the en uh, when the enemy actually dies okay so what we're gonna do is Let's implement this. We are going to... Uh, what is this rewards? Enemy reward info. Currency, currency stat and amount. Wait. Oh, no. Currency is the type of currency. This is the stat we, which we use for... Um, we're getting the multiplier and this is the amount. Okay. I think we're actually going to have this. I want it to be read only. And here in reset, we're gonna say, okay, pre multiply rewards. Oh no, d dot pre multiply rewards is equal to d dot rewards dot. Um, we're gonna do a select word. Um, okay, so we have currency, which is the air dot currency. We're gonna have currency stat, which is r dot currency stat, and lastly, we're gonna have amount, which is r dot amount. And now here, we are going to do this multiplication. Uh, yeah, so we get the enemy definition and this is R dot. And we need to round it to an end. And this whole ordeal, we have to make it an array. 
Oh, okay, that should do it. So now here, instead of look uh, going to the rewards, we're gonna go to the pre-multiplied rewards. Okay, let's try that. Uh, no, D is so there are some components that I made. Um, I, I'm gonna show you a bit of the structure and I'm gonna talk about it. So. I've basically split the the functionality of a of a component. Let's say the the component that does the movement. So this is the the enemy movement component. So what I've done, I I've basically split the, the 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 functionality of the component. So what it does, and the data. The data is in a separate component. So here is all the data for the for for this for this component, and the 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 the, the, the the logic for the component is it's in another class, and uh, what this D is is a reference to to the data class. So whatever I put in the data, I can access it in the component itself through through this D. And yeah, so basically D is short for data. That's uh, that's basically it. Okay, so now if we look at enemy reward data, if we look in internal, yeah, we have this. So now if we play, oh, shit, I, let's put a weapon here. Uh, let's look at the enemy. Okay, so this is the healer. Let's go to the reward. And the pre multiplier reward, it's not, it's not here because I guess the, the reset was not called when we, when he was initially, uh, Like he was initially spawned. Yeah, okay. I'm going to call this reset myself in, in load here as well. Actually, no, I don't like it. Let's make another method that does this. Um, Private void setup setup reword. We're gonna move this here. The reset is gonna call this, and this is gonna make make much more sense now because we see setup reword. That does make sense. Okay, so let's try it again. Now it should be should be actually fine. It should also have the pre-multiplier words at the beginning. So that you can use composition. Yeah, kind of, not necessarily. So, I mean, yeah, but, but at the same time, no. So what I basically wanted to do was, um, Okay, uh, one second. Let me let me check this enemy and see if it has the the correct data now. Yeah, pre multiply rewards, and it has fifty instead of whatever fifty. It doesn't matter. Uh, we don't have any multipliers rate. Doesn't really matter. Now let's try to kill it, and we should not get an error when we kill it. Yep, we just got whatever fifty coins, but we've used five to to create this weapon. Yep. Okay. So it works. Um, yeah, I was trying to, to imitate something that, that, that the unity is, uh, is working on, which is, um, which is called dots. Um, let me see if I can get a, a nice 
yeah this is the, the page for it so yeah they're basically redoing everything or or the, the engine from the from the ground up using um yeah basically writing writing code in, in a different way so 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 up until now and it's gonna be the the, the case for for a for a few years down the road but uh they were using um yeah, they they were using classes or like yeah, how to, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, they, yeah, they were they were using OOP for 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 building everything related to the game, and now they've moved or they're trying to move. They're not they're not there yet, but they are they are trying to go data oriented, in the sense that they're they're trying to do this split between data and the actual. Um, pieces of code that work with the with that with that set data and me doing this split in my code so so they are doing it for for performance reasons uh and a lot more a, a lot of other stuff but me doing doing this in my code it, it's not necessary for performance it's more for starting to get in the mindset uh, of of separating data from from logic, so I can uh, whenever I decide and whenever they they they, they release the first version of dots, um, so I so I can be at least at least closer to that mindset of of uh, having this separation and uh, ha having a an easier time to to get into it. So that's basically the idea. And on top of that, there are some some things that I that I've made on top of those uh, those components, which um, which are helping me in in, in in some ways. For example, by having this, it's not necessary, but in the way that I made it, by having this separation, I am able to to have a save and load system for the game, which comes basically for free. So just by writing the components and the data components uh, in a certain way. Uh, the the save and load system for the game is just is is guaranteed. I, I have to to write a couple of lines of code for for each um, for each component for for the data to actually be serialized and deserialized in the load and in the load and save process. So yeah. Okay, so another bug fixed. Uh, let's actually um, uh, let's see. So enemy reward. Yeah, so the enemy reward is part of this. Okay, so that's the first fix and the second one. Um, let's attribute it to this one. So fix this. Um, Let's just go with that asset. Yeah, sure. I'm uh, I'm quite happy to talk about the, the the things that I've done for the game. And yeah, exactly, it's it's built into the components themselves. So, for example, I don't know. Let's take the the healer data. 
there's only one thing that I would like to for this component. The the basically the healer component is the brain of the the healer uh, the healer enemy, which does a lot of stuff here. But it doesn't matter. We, we what we care about for the load and save system. It has a lot of data, but the only thing that I would like to save is uh, this is active, which is active means that the, the, the healer is attached to the tower and it's actually healing the, the enemies that it, it encounters. And what I have to do for, 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 for me to have, uh, um, or for, for this component to, to be taken into consideration when, when uh, the load and save uh, functionality is performed, I have to make a, a simplified version of this class, which is basically a struct with the data that I want to save. Uh, I have to specify to the to the class that okay I want so so this is the uh, this component is of type entity data and also this is the how the the serials data should look like and uh, the, the 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 last thing that I have to do is implement two methods which basically says okay when I deserialize tell me where I should put the data and when I want to serialize the data yeah I create that that struct so. And just by having this now, this component will be will be serialized when the game is saved, and will be automatically deserialized, and the the data will be populated uh, uh, at load. And there are a lot of things like this that that I've implemented with those uh, with those components that I that I'm using. I have the the, the loading system, or I have a let's uh, let's see, yeah. I have this lifecycle service, which basically what what it does it is keeping track of the of the state of the game. Am I playing? Am I am I paused? Am I still loading the game or stuff like that? So when I play the game, um, we're gonna we're gonna see here that yeah, those are the states the the, the game can be in. Uninitialized is at the beginning, initializing saying basically, okay, I'm loading the game, and then whatever. Those are the, the other states. And yeah, having this, all the components uh, that that the, the, the enemies and other systems in the game are using can hook up into this, and or, or they are hooked up um, automatically. So basically when I say, okay, the game is paused, everything stops because each and every enemy knows to look at this service and it says, okay, the game is stopped so I, I can no longer move. But when the game is playing again, everything just starts again, you know? So there are a lot of small things that, that are uh, uh, neatly integrated and yeah, it just makes things easier to, 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 to start up with. I don't have to re-implement saving and loading. I just I just have it and I just use it. There are a lot of debug stuff that I have. Like for example here, I have a, a history to know when the when the state was changed and I can see where from the code that change was made. So I can track in case there are some errors, I can track it. There are a lot of uh, a lot of small things that I've added to this uh, To this to this library which I call the ES framework. But it's, yeah, this is something that I've built. Yeah, in like I started in I think 2018 with with the, with the first major game that we made. That's when I started working on this, and yeah, over time I've just. Uh, developed it further and now we are at the let's say second big game that that it's actually using it i've also made some some or i've participated in some game jams and i've uh, and i've used it there just to sp uh, speed up the process of uh, of starting the game or starting making the game okay let's go to the next task now that we have fixed the the bugs uh, the next one, 
we're gonna do a dummy crystal so so the idea of the game is that there is a crystal at the top of the tower which you have to protect so that's why you have to kill the enemy so they don't reach the the crystal but currently we don't have the crystal there in place so we're gonna make a crystal at the top and uh, i think we're gonna do something fancy with it i i, I just want to play with uh, with shader graph a bit so yeah let's start doing this so the crystal is gonna be very easy to do because uh, we're gonna use a pro builder for this. Uh, what is my what is my tower? I was expecting to see it here. Don't like that. Okay, so this is well. Oh, that's a. Mm, that's a good question. Uh, where should I put the crystal? I have to position it from code. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We have to position the, the, the crystal from the code because, as I said, we are expanding the tower so the crystal will We'll have to move the crystal as we expand the tower. But that's not a, that is not a problem. Uh, let's create it first. So let's do a new shape. Uh, it's gonna be a what? Uh, yeah, let's do a sphere. Uh, pfft. I don't know what the hell this is. I guess that's a sphere. Uh, why did he let me do it like this? I don't want to do it like this. Um, okay, that's my sphere. Okay. I don't want it to be smooth. I want... Can I do even less subdivisions? No, I can't. Only the, the one is the minimum. Okay. Let's put this in the tower builder. And I guess that's it. Yay, we have a... A crystal. I don't know how big it is compared to the tower. I'm assuming it's not that big in comparison, so... Actually, let's save this and let's play the game. Let's see where the... So this is the tower, tower builder and sphere. Oh, damn, wait, why is it like here? I mean, why is it so far away? Uh, okay, something is not right. The pivot is not in the right place, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's open Pro Builder. Uh, center pivot. Yeah. Yeah, now it's correct. Or it's in the, in the correct place. Yeah, exit prefab mode. Yep, that's insanely small. You can already see it. Compared to the tower, this is like a, a very small uh, sphere. Uh, let's say five times as big. Writing five times is okay. So let's do that in here. Um, let's just put it a bit below the, a bit below the tower so we can see it in play mode. And now what, what I would like to do is have, uh, let's create a material. 
we're gonna make a material for actually no let's make the the shader first so shader urp it's gonna be a lit shader Dark crystal shader and from this let's make the material our crystal material let's drag this over okay now let's open this up and start working on it okay so my idea is actually first let's add we need two colors so lit color and so my idea is i want to make um as the paint so let's think that this is our our crystal at the top so what i would like to do is based on the health of the tower i would like to have the crystal be filled uh uh you know have have a color at the bottom and a color at the top so let's say that uh yeah yeah so yeah so based on the color it's going to be uh, based on the health or, or the amount of health that it has uh this will be filled uh, more or less so that's what we'll have to do through 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 the or in the shader and that's why I have two colors. So, so the lit color is the, the, the blue in here and the unlit is the, is the gray. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we are going to need a float, which is going to say, uh, health per health percent. And let's set this up. Oh, that is so nice. Previously they had for, for the reference, which you are using in the code to, to actually uh, specify those, uh, those values from code. Previously those names were random garbage, like random, random names, but apparently they made it so, so they match up with the, with the, with the fancy name that you see in the UI. So that is awesome. Uh, but I don't really like that. Uh, I'm going to change it a bit. Like this. Okay. Uh, let's put some colors by default. So let's make this cyan. Also, I would like this to be HDR. So yeah, let's have cyan. And let it be a bit more interesting let's put this be a whitish color also i want this to be actually no let's not make this hdr it's gonna or no let's put it as hdr uh let's turn up the alpha for this as well yeah those two are exposed uh this is gonna be Let's put a 0.5 by default, so we can see it in the preview. This is going to be a slider between 0 and 1. And that's kind of it, actually. I'm going to try to do it like this. Let's split this. Let's split the UV. And we're going to look at the green color. I'm going to compare A with...
easy to manipulate the gallery if it's HDR. Uh, I don't know how to do it from code, to be honest. Um, but from from the interface, uh, it's I mean, it's it's easy. From the I I don't think I've ever actually assigned uh, a color from or an or an HDR color from the from the code. But from uh, yeah from the from the interface, as you can see, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Because on top of having the, the 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 colors themselves, you have this intensity, which basically controls yeah it, it's just a, a another parameter for the color. I think from code, uh, you have to you have to just go beyond, so you would specify the colors by by saying the yeah the amount of of color on on the uh, red, green, and blue channels. And I think for HDR or or no for 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 SDR, uh, you, the the values should be between zero and one. And for HDR, I think you can go beyond one, or just by going beyond one, that would that, that would qualify that that color uh, as being a an HDR color. I think that's how it works. But I haven't actually done it from code uh, before. So if n is less than the percent, it's gonna be lit. Otherwise, it's gonna be unlit, and we can already see it in here. It seems to uh, do the trick. So now this is gonna go to the base color. Hell yeah! Is there anything else we need to do? I think let's let's add a. Let's add a slider for smoothness. Uh, smoothness. Uh, emission we don't need, actually. Let's get rid of emission. Ambient occlusion we don't need. Let's add metallic as well, sure. So, metallic. Let's put it above here. So metallic, uh, uh, both smoothest and metallic. We're gonna make them sliders. So now we can save this. And now, theoretically, uh, save asset. We should already, mm, but it, it, it actually doesn't work, but it kind of works. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you're using the UV and it's not actually correct to use the UV, but... Yeah. In the preview it looks okay. But not for this model because of the way the, the UVs are made. But the idea is there, yeah. We, we just have to not use the... Oh, nice. Glad to, to see you. Uh, you found that, uh, found that useful. Okay. Um, let's, uh, yeah, let's go back to the shader and actually, let's go to the next one. Yeah, let's go to the shader and, hmm.
Actually, let's move the, the, the shader in here so we can see any T. Oh, damn, this is actually working. Are you, are you crazy? Uh, well, actually, not really. Find the works, but I think it's gonna break up if we. Oh no. I think I have to divide this. Um, I need a height. I think I need the height of the of the object, and I have to divide it by. I have to divide this position by by the height. What should we do? What should we do? Um, let's just do it in here. Um, actually, no, let's, um, let's look at the documentation. It doesn't say anything about the... Object position. And it's not like I can debug that value. Um, never mind, I actually can debug it. I just have to hook it up to the base color directly. And I can make an idea of what's happening here. No, I actually want to only look at the Y. Oh yeah, so the fact that it's that black at the bottom, that, that means that it goes into negatives. So let's add one maybe. Or no, uh, let's no, uh, let's do remap. So it's between minus one and one, and let's do it between zero and one. Save. Okay, now it looks like something. Let's try to no, 
yeah, yeah, let's try to hook it up in here. Let's see what it does. Yep, now it seems to be to be okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So actually uh no. I'm gonna do some things here. Uh, so that's a branch for the base color. I would like to have a branch for... Or no, actually I can do a split here. And get the alpha opacity in here. Let's move, let's move those. Okay, let's collapse this. Let's save. And I think if I change the, the alpha of this, yeah, now we've made it, uh, made this see through. Let's keep that at 50% transparency. And let's actually uh, change the, the default color in here as well. Also put it at 50. So let's save the asset and let's see how it looks in the game. We're gonna for now we're gonna manually position it at the top of the tower. And then yeah. Let's manually move it at the top. And let's just go and see how it looks like. Nice. It's not perfect right now, but let's make it less uh, smooth. Let's put it at 0.5. Actually, I think I'm going to make it more see-through. Let's put it at 25, maybe. Or 12. Yeah. The, the, the background doesn't help also. But, yeah. It's kind of better. Cool. By default, it's going to be like this, uh, all the way uh, filled. And as the, the health goes down, uh, this is going to go down as well. Nice. Sure, I can I can change the color. I think, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, emerald is green, right? Uh, but it's a darker green, I guess. Something like this. Maybe increase the. There you go. Hmm. 
Can I make it uh, render both? Actually, no, I don't like it. It would be interesting to have this field so so it looks like it's it's actually filled. But it doesn't matter right now because we don't know what we're gonna do with this crystal. This is just for for just to have something right now, and uh, yeah, we'll work more on it uh, when we actually implement it for you know for production. But for now, for now, it's it's okay. Um. Yeah, the only thing left to do is actually control it. No, we have two things left to do. Position it at the top of the tower, that's one. And second, uh, control the, 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 the amount of, of fill uh, based on the, on the health. So first, uh, we have to go to tower, uh, runtime and tower builder. And here we have to actually see how we can position it on top of the the last module. So let's get a, a reference. This is not actually correct. I should actually modify this, but yeah. This breaks this breaks my my rule of, of having uh, data and logic separate. Um, but I'm most probably gonna gonna uh, refactor this whole class in a in a later stream. Um, yeah, let's just get a reference to it uh, and. Serialize field. Yeah, here it would be the the place or hmm. Yeah, let's do it here. So actually, let's make a, a method that does this. Set up crystal. Position is going to be vector three dot up multiplied by, let's see. The I don't have the um, tour data dot spawned modules. Uh, wait, this is a number, right? Yeah. So spawned modules uh, multiplied by global tower data dot module height. And let's put parentheses around this. And actually, let's add a okay. Uh, var y equals this. So um, let's say um. Five meters plus this, and this will actually be new vector three, zero, y, and zero. And let's call this here. Uh, 
file. Uh, we have to assign that reference, otherwise it's not going to work. Come on. There we go, save, go back, play. And now we should have the, the, the crystal at the top of the tower. It's probably gonna be, oh, it's barely on top of the tower. We have to add maybe like, yeah. We have to add like maybe one meter or something. Ideally would make this, oh, six meters. We would make this, uh, Changeable from the interface, but as I said, we're probably gonna uh, rewrite this or just rearrange the code in here. But that at a later date. Because there are some things that we need to do, which I think it, they might be hard to do uh, with the way the code is written right now. But yeah, here we go. So we have the we have the crystal. Let's put the laser at the bottom here. Okay, let's speed up the game. Let's speed it up even even more. Let's put it at ten times. Okay, so now we can expand the tower. Let's go at the top, expand. And now we should see the the crystal here. Yep, nice. So the crystal is always at the top of the tower. Cool. Now the last thing we need to, to take care of is actually uh, change the change the health of the yeah, change, change yeah. We change the fill amount based on the on the health of the tower. So let's do that in the tower health component. Let's do it here. So public. Um, let's do mesh render. Public mesh render. Crystal uh, renderer. Uh, let's put it in the internal tab. Uh, capital R here. And also, uh, crystal material. Hmm. Actually, no, we're going to use or mm, how should we do this there are a couple of ways to 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 change the color one is by changing the material another one is by making another material at runtime But yeah, we're gonna choose the third option, which is having a. And actually, we're, I'm not gonna do it here. Um, private uh, material property block. Material property block. We need to initialize it here. New material property block. Do we have an update? No, we don't. Uh, let's add a. Actually, I don't need an update. Do I need an update? I don't think I need an update. Let's try it without an update. So on take damage, I guess. Uh, we're gonna say d dot crystal material dot get uh. Wait. Uh, 
get property get property block mpb mpb dot set uh, no set float which is health percent and we're gonna set it to d dot health divided by d dot max health um yeah do your thing and cache that stuff d dot crystal render dot set property block mpb okay let's actually cut this because i'm gonna put it in a method so private void setup uh, or no update crystal and now that i think about it i sh i think i should actually do this in a in a separate component and not hook it to even even though it's the tower health i think logically it should stay in another in another place let's do it here as well yeah let's try it No, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, see you. Thanks for being here. Let's try this. Hopefully it's going to work. Hopefully. Oh, I forgot to assign the renderer. Tower. Um, tower. Tower health. Internal. Crystal renderer. This. Save. Back. Play. I got that. That shines so bright. Uh, let's put a laser there. Let's speed this up. Actually, no. I did a bad thing. I shouldn't have put a laser there because I want to see the tower actually taking damage. But actually, this is. No, this is set at one. Never mind. That's one enemy, that's the second one. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that was a bit fast, but... Uh, well, this is empty. <laughs> Let's try this again, without it being uh, this sped up. Let's speed it up, though. That's the second one. The, the, the healers don't, don't do damage to the tower. So that's why we're still at 100%. But now, yeah, we are getting the the other enemies. None are coming through that way. So you should be able to see this in its all in this whole glory. Let's maximize it. Actually, we should start seeing seeing it get down. There we go. Ding, 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 ding. There we go. Now it's completely empty. Cool. That is actually cool. Okay, so this task is done. Uh, and, and it only took us 40 minutes. I was, uh, or I uh, estimated 30 minutes for this, but uh, 40 minutes is, uh, well within the, the error of margin um, or the margin of error okay uh, so this is the feature add crystal at the top of the tower yes please publish Uh, 
and yeah the, the next one would be to add a, a laser beam to the laser weapon yeah we're gonna do this and yeah i don't think i'm i think i don't think we're gonna do the spear weapon today um we we might do it i don't know if i'm gonna do a stream tomorrow maybe 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 we're gonna do a stream tomorrow and work on that uh or if not we're gonna do it uh, next week but first yeah let's let's add a, a visual uh, indicator to uh, to the laser weapon so let's go there uh, dummy weapon this is the laser so now laser attack we are going to make a let's see um We are going to do a, what is it? Oh damn, they've added some, hmm. nice. Um, effects, that's what I'm looking for. Effects, line. Uh, it is going to be in world space. Actually, no, no. No, we're not gonna do it in world space. Never mind. No, it's not gonna be in world space. Uh... Okay. Uh, let's make the let's make a material for the laser. So actually no laser mat. Uh, laser attack line. Let's see. This is the material. Let's add a funky color to this. No. Let's use Bada 55. Yeah, uh, well, it's kind of washed out. Yeah, no, never mind. Let's use this. Yeah. Very smooth. Maybe very metallic. I don't know. It doesn't matter really. And actually, no, we can do it from here, but we can add a mission to it. And we are going to do that. Uh. We have a mission. Uh, it's not going to receive shadows. And anything else? Specular highlights? No. Uh, no reflections. GPU instancing? Sure. Okay. So we have the line. It is kind of fat let's shrink it down a bit yeah let's do it half the height um actually let's add a let's add a key here edit key so value is one the time is 0 0.1 the time man they either use this and it's kind of shit um edit key so at time zero the value should be zero. Oh, this is not gonna work because i'm only gonna have two vertices never mind or maybe maybe it's gonna work i'm pretty sure it's not gonna work yeah never mind Yeah, we're, we're only going to have two points in this, so... Uh, no casting shadows, no light probs, no dynamic occlusion, no, no nothing. Hmm. 
now. Okay. Let's just keep it like that. Let's go to tower, uh, no tower, weapons, attacks, laser, laser attack data. And let's add this public line render, laser render. Let's add it to the internal tab. And let's go to the attack. And here, what we are going to do is, let's see. Here. I'm gonna say d dot d dot laser render dot uh, game object set active false. If you can't find this, and if you do find it, no, we're not gonna do it like that. No. No, 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 no. We're gonna do d dot enemy detector dot on enemy enter. On enemy enter. We don't care which enemy it is. We just know we're gonna target it. I think. Right on exit. We're gonna do false. And here, our only concern is actually to set position. At index one, uh, it's gonna be um, d dot. No, yeah, no, yeah, d dot laser render dot trans. No, 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 no. The transform dot position minus. No. Wait. Yeah, from the closest enemy transform position we're going to subtract the position of the or initial yeah or the position of the laser yeah this should do it all okay. right let's try it uh we need to assign some references here so let's see Laser attack, internal, uh, line render, save, back. Let's try it. Uh, actually, to be able to see it better, um, yeah, no, we're gonna make this uh, laser not be OP anymore. Because right now it does a lot of damage, so let's just say it does um, two damage per uh, five damage per second, let's say. And now we should be able to see it actually firing. So, but actually not for the for the first two waves. Let's just. But I haven't seen shit. Ah. Uh, 
uh, let's pause it. I'm gonna do some manipulation of the scene here. Let's put a laser. Oh, it's sticking out, which is not cool. But let's get rid of the gizmos. When the other enemies are gonna come, we should be able to see the laser. Yep, there we go. I mean. It's kind of working. It's not actually working the way it's supposed to, but it's kind of working. Okay, so the first thing is When an enemy enters, we know for sure that we want to enable it. But when it exits, we only want to disable it if it doesn't have enemies. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is... At the start here, we know for sure we want to disable it. Okay. Now the last thing is basically this. Basically doesn't work as intended, so I don't know why. Um, so what I'm gonna do is have both or actually, not not both, but have the the gizmos enabled. Uh, let's put one there and one there. Let's wait for the enemies. There we go. We have enemies. Actually, let's pause first. Let's get to a weapon. So this is one of the weapons. And what I want to see now is I want to enable gizmos and let's wait for the enemies to come. Okay, so I moved it over a bit. Oh, so now it is targeting it correctly. Cool. So it is actually working as intended. Let's get out of play mode. Let's uh, enter again play mode. And let's stop right away. Uh, and for the final test, we're going to have this. Uh, let's move the weapon slot a bit. Just so it's a bit to the side. And let's put a laser there. Okay, we killed that one. 
and now it doesn't work. Why? Why doesn't it work? Uh, let's put a Yeah, let's put a by not getting a hit because the debugger is not attached. Let's attach it. There we go. We got a hit. So this is the position of the closest enemy, whichever it is. And this is the position of the laser renderer. Let's clean up a bit. I mean, this doesn't look bad. I mean, it, no, it actually looks bad because on X it should move quite a bit. Oh, I think it doesn't work because it's rotated. I bet you that is the problem. Okay, I know what the problem is. Okay, 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 I know. Yeah, we're gonna do it. Uh, I, I, I think there's no other way than doing it in, uh, in workspace, actually. So let's do that. Uh, let's go back to the weapon and change it uh, to be in, uh, in workspace. Line, um, use world space, and now it's gone. Let's try to put it by default. Uh, actually, I can't really write. Let's put that 11. Let's put this at 12. Let's put this at 5 and this at 5. And now we have it. Basically, we put it roughly in the same position. Uh, not really, but doesn't really actually. Yeah, let's put it at 12 here and 13 here. Or 11. 0.5, 0 0.25. Okay, it's roughly in the same spot as it was before. Uh, yeah, we've checked word space, and now what we have to do is let's get this, let's duplicate this. This is gonna be on zero, and we're gonna do this. So we're only always gonna set. Actually, do I need to set the zero position? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, let's let's leave it like this. Yeah, we're gonna set both position. I'm pretty sure now it's gonna work correctly. Uh, let's do that that setup again, where we move the weapon slot a bit, just so it's not in line with the path. Something like this. Let's unpause, laser, place it. Okay. There we go. And now we should be able to see the. Yep. There we go. Now the laser correctly targets the. There you go. Cool. Now let's make it a little bit more pretty. So let's put this line uh, or or the line renderer actually inside of the 
tower here. Just so it looks like it's linked to this to this prism. So that's the first thing. And the second thing, we're gonna change the material so it's not actually uh, green, but it, it's actually uh, a, some, a cyan color. So it matches the, the tower. So something like this. Okay, save it and let's try it again. Pause. Yeah, we definitely need to, to tweak those uh, those weapon slots so they're not on the path. Okay, that should do it. Let's put the laser there. There you go. We have the laser. And it's working. Cool. And this one actually finished early. 23 minutes instead of the 30 that I uh, estimated. So it balances with the previous... Uh, with the previous... Uh, task where we've gone uh, when we've gone over um, yeah cool and this is the the last test that we're going to do today in this stream. Yeah, so, so we've done a couple of things. Uh, we do we do still have the the, the dog uh, with with the healers, which I thought I uh, I thought I uh, fixed, but I did not. Uh, this one where there's are attaching to the tower too soon. So that bug is still present in the game. I have to see why it's happening. I'm not sure why. Um, but I, th but I think I have a, a, a better idea of why it's happening. Um, so let's, let's do that. Let's do this, or uh, back in plant and let's comment, um, try with, uh, the 180 module so so every i saw i saw the the error the the, the problem was with the the one, 180 module so i don't know what's the deal with that and the 180 module uh is this where the the, the spawning starts here and then 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 uh, there is a there is a web slot here so so having over here the first uh, the first uh uh, healer attaches around here, and then when the second one spawns, he attaches immediately to the tower. So yeah, you have to see what's up with this. Okay, so we're gonna look at this again in a, in another stream. But yeah, the the, the others are, the others were were fixed. Um, now we have this uh, this nice uh, this nice crystal at the top, and we're basically matching what we have in the um, in the prototype because we all the crystal at the top in the prototype but it was just a stationary one though that was that the the one from the prototype was a little bit fancy because it was animated but for this is not necessary because i don't know exactly how we want to do this the crystal i just wanted to have something here to represent the the, the tower self 
even though you always have the the, the tower cells at, at, the, at the top in the in the UI, I also wanted to have something like in the actual game in, on the tower that the, to to signify that that health. So that's why why we have this now. Um, yeah. And here is gonna, they're coming and yep. the the feel of this uh, decreases with each hit, matching the, the the matching the health at the top. Yeah, and also the the, the, the fact that we have a we have the 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 the, the indicator for the, the for the laser. Yeah, that's that's a very good very good thing. Previously, we didn't know when it was firing. Also, it was OP. It was uh, it had very much uh, very high damage set to it, but uh, yeah, now it's it's much better. Where are my enemies? I think the, the there are big enemies that are coming right now. That's why it's so slow. Yeah, we have the big enemies. Let's put a laser here. I don't know if we, if we can see the the laser when when the when the when the weapon is. Uh, you know, inside of the path, but yeah, you can see it a bit there, and now we can see that all because the <laughs> the big enemies cover the the weapon completely. But see it a bit. Yeah. So this is it for today. We are going to continue either tomorrow or next uh, or uh, next week. Um. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna look again at this uh, at this bug with the healers, and then we're gonna move over to to the uh, to the spear. And uh, until then, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some some new tasks and see see what else we we need to make for a you know for a first uh, playable version of the game. I have to do some planning. But yeah. Um, we're gonna stop here today, and yeah, as I said, we're gonna continue next time. So thanks for being here, and I hope to see you next stream again. Bye bye.